Counting calories is just a way to feel productive about eating unhealthy, right? That's my opinion. Is it controversial? Let me tell you my story to explain things a bit here. I used to be the kind of person that would really love to track things like that. That was like completely part of my personality. I loved doing that kind of thing. I I, I was a OCD type personality. I liked keeping all my blocks in a row, all my toys lined up. And that was the kind of kid I was, right? And so it really fell into my personality and like slotted in perfectly to be able to track everything, right? Go on apps like MyFitnessPal and it would get to a very meticulous point where I'd be weighing everything I ate on like a and a weight measure with how many grams I'm eating of this and measuring it in the calories and everything like that. And it was, while it was cool as a concept, it became something that got in my way. It became something that was eventually way too stressful and awkward and it got in the way of me living my normal life, right? But then there was a point, a switch in my mind at which I was able to have a more relaxed view of the food around me. And I was able to live healthier, normally, right? Without counting those calories. It was just the fact that I knew, I know what is healthy. I accepted that within myself. I know what's healthy now. As long as I eliminate the junk foods, then I don't need to count my calories. I just eat until I'm full and that'll be it. I can just finally relax, stress-free and succeeding in the goals that I want in fitness. You see, in my experience and the people around me, this activity of counting calories is just something that causes stress. Eventually, it causes people to lead to failure as well. And even if someone does does succeed with this counting calories thing and they get the body they want, they remain fit and healthy, I have to ask the question, is it because they're counting the calories or is it because they're eating generally and keeping fit generally as a person, right? What do you attribute their success to? Right? Maybe they're counting calories, but they're also eating a very strict, healthy diet. Right? Maybe it's that, not the counting calories that counts. Like, if you're going to tell me that a Twinkie and a banana is the same because they have the same amount of calories, you can f*** right off. Because, listen, what is a calorie? Right? Do you know what a calorie is? A calorie is a unit of energy. Right? It means, basically, if you burn this food, how much heat does it give off? Right? That's what a calorie is. And so you're going to determine what you eat by that factor. So this paper has more calories than like this button, right? And so, oh, I should eat the button then, right? That's the kind of logic you're using here. Like, how silly does that sound? And I've, I've seen this, this ridiculous happenstance every time when someone rejects something that is like completely healthy food because, oh, it's, it's too many calories. I can't eat that chicken. I can't eat that, that banana. I can't have a bit of honey in my tea because, oh, it's too many calories. I can't, that won't fit in my calorie budget today, right? And then they go for that wrapper, that chocolate bar that says low calorie on the side. Like, oh, it's low calorie. I can have that because it's a low calorie, right? Do you see how silly this becomes? You've been brainwashed into thinking like this by all this like social media influencers and people with these, these apps influence you to think in this way. But what happened to thinking for yourself, right? Don't just be an NPC, a sheep just follows along with the crowd. Be a thinker and think for yourself for a second here. Like, yes, you might feel productive because you put your Twinkie into the MyFitnessPal, but what does that achieve for you, right? What health does that, what benefit does that give to you, right? When you've accounted for all your calories in the day and what you have left for your calorie budget for the day is a stick of celery on your dinner plate. And you're like, I'm so hungry, but that's all I'm allowed to eat. Like something's gone wrong there, right? Our ancestors weren't sitting at the table and saying, oh no, I mustn't eat anymore when they have a full fridge and plenty of food and say, oh, I'm, I, I'm, my fitness pal says I can't eat, so I, I shan't eat today, darling. Do you think they were doing that? Sitting at the dinner table with an empty stomach and a full fridge because an app told them they shouldn't eat. The life you live when you live like that is one of stress and, and discomfort that you don't need, right? That discomfort, sometimes pain is good because the other side of pain becomes a good thing, right? But this pain is just pointless, right? It doesn't even help you. But there is an easier way. All that time ago when I realized what it was to eat simply, I just got rid of those apps that count calories. I thought, I know what it is to eat healthy. And you don't need an app to tell you either. You know, right? A lot of people come to me and ask me, oh, what are the healthy foods to eat? 
You know already, okay? You have an intuition. You know these things. You know what's better between a Twinkie and a banana. You know what's better between a chicken and a sleeve of Oreos. You know that can of beer is not so good for you. You know that cigarette is not so good for you. You know that cake is not going to be so good for you. You know these things. I know some people say that, oh, oh, it's fine in moderation. It's fine in moderation. It's f***ing not. Like, fine, okay, have a cigarette, but don't pretend that it's good for you to have that cigarette. You know it's bad. Accept it. It's like, oh, have some cyanide. Oh, it, this isn't the lethal dose, so it won't kill you. Everything's fine in moderation. Oh, it'll, it'll only half kill you, so it, it's fine. You wouldn't take it, would you? You know what's good and what's bad. And you know what you're doing when you're eating those things, when you're taking that cigarette, when you're drinking that beer. And for those of you who say, Dylan, have some fun in life, right? Here's the thing, right? Your brain resets its kind of fun calibrator when you eat things like this. When you eat something that's very highly stimulating, like some Oreos or some sweeties, your brain set point of like fun with food is going to reset to like super low again, right? So that you need those sweets to feel that tingling in your tongue. You need those Oreos, you need that like high palatable flavor to create that feeling again, right? But once you switch to healthier basic foods, like proteins, like chicken, like, you know, whole foods, potatoes, bread, whatever you want, right? Then your brain set point will adjust itself over time so that those things will taste nice again, right? You don't need to have Oreos, okay? You don't need to have sweets. These things aren't necessary. Our ancestors didn't have access to this kind of stuff and they survived very healthily. So I know you said you should know what's healthy, but I want to give you some quick tips just in case you want some like nudging in the right direction in terms of what I believe are good foods to eat. The bottom line, the kind of like 80-20 of this kind of discussion we're having is don't eat processed foods, but eat whole foods instead, right? That is like, if you can do that, that is the bulk of the equation of what it is to eat healthy in the modern day today, right? So anything with like processed sugars, processed oils, that kind of stuff, don't eat it, right? So like Oreos and sweeties and things like that, that is in the bad category. You, like, you kind of intuitively know that, but things that are whole foods, things like potatoes, rice, chicken, beef, things like that. Generally, if you stick to those kind of foods, you will be okay, right? The general principle, if you find it hard to remember, is cook all of your own food, right? An Oreo is not something that you cook, so don't have that. I know some people are going to make the excuse of, oh, what about ramen, right? If you made the noodle yourself out of flour and water, fine, have that. But don't have the ramen from a shop, right? You, you don't... Like, oh, technically I've cooked that. No, I'm not going to have that as an excuse. That won't cut it. So with that, that is like an 8 out of 10 level of healthy eating. That's fine. That's great. If you want to step it up to level 10, here's some additional tips. So the diet I'm eating right now is like a modified carnivore diet. If that seems extreme to you, just forget about what I'm saying right now. I'm just going to talk to you guys who want to really really step it up and eat something that is very, very healthy. Okay? So number one on this level 10 category here. No carbs, no veg. Okay? Just two rules, no carb, no veg. No carb, semi-controversial, like, okay, get rid of rice, get rid of, like, any kind of floury kind of products, any pastries, any cakes, any kind of potatoes, pasta, that kind of thing. Semi-controversial, but no veg. A lot of you are going to be screaming at my, your phone screen right now thinking, what are you talking about, no veg, Dylan? That is crazy, that is weird. Just try it out. Humans have never needed veg in the history of humankind, okay? Trust me when I say that. Go do some research, you will find the same results. I've not eaten a single vegetable in nearly three years. I feel as healthy as I've ever felt in my entire life. Other things you do eat is meat and eggs, fruit and honey, right? I eat right now meat, fruit and honey, that's it, right? That's all I eat. So that is it, meat, fruit and honey, your diet is complete, fantastic. So that's a level 10. If you find that too extreme, too complicated, then just stick to the first one that I talked about, the level kind of the 8 out of 10 kind of principle, which is just cook all of your own food. If you take one thing away from this video, just cook all of your own food. Screw calorie tracking, cook your own food, that's it. So once you're there, just eat until you're full and then stop eating. Stop eating beyond the, the point that you're full, obviously, right? That That's an intuitive way of eating that's natural. You don't have to rely on some app to tell you how much you can eat. It's basic. It comes pre-downloaded into your brain if you're a natural human being. If you're an alien, I'm sorry, I can't help you. But maybe watch the next video. It might be helpful for you. The point being in this video is that you just eat good stuff and eliminate the bad stuff. That's it. That's all you have to think about 
and simplifying things down to that level makes things easy for your life, right? It makes it that the stress is decreased and you can just live easily and have a good relationship with food. Counting calories is where it becomes difficult and awkward and difficult to kind of maintain when you go out into the world and eat with people and things like that. It just becomes something that you can't sustain. Like if you want to gain weight, just eat a bit more. If you want to lose weight, just eat a bit less, right? That's all. That's all you have to know, right? It's, it's very basic and intuitive. Don't force it, right? Like with calorie counting, it kind of feels like you're forcing it. But don't, this way, you, sh you shouldn't need to feel like you're forcing it. In summary, don't be one of these NPC sheeps that justify eating 23 Twinkies today because you've tracked it on MyFitnessPal. Be a thinker. Think about it and think, okay, there must be something wrong. I can't just eat this many sweeties and it be justified and be fine. Surely there's something more to this and think it through, right? Be a thinker, okay? Listen to your body and keep it simple and you should be fine with your diet. I hope that helps. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. Subscribe.